And last week, we looked at how Jesus gives a sign. He gives a sign about the, you know, his death and resurrection. And he, and then we, we also saw a very important point about how, how believers uh, believe and how are un, how unbelievers are. Uh, he, and we saw that though the belief that Jesus' disciples did not understand the sign when Jesus was speaking, but later when he died and rose up again, they remembered this, that you know, Jesus said this particular words. Okay, and Jesus said that you know uh, this is what was very important, and especially because we are celebrating Good Friday and Easter this week in the world all across. I just thought of uh, and and also in providentially this has come, and I thought let's look at this in more detail when Jesus says destroy this temple, and in three days I rise up, I'll, I'll raise it up. And even as I was meditating upon it, and I started realizing that, you know, this word is actually a complete picture of the gospel. It is a complete picture of the good news of the Bible. Okay. And uh, let's look at a few of the things. Now, if you look at it, it says destroy the temple. So there are two things that are happening. There is a death that happens on a Good Friday. And there is a resurrection that happens after three days. Let's look at them. But first, let us look at the first point, the death. Now, uh, why did Jesus die? Was his death, you know, a lot of people say Jesus was a very good person. He was a prophet. Some uh, like uh, other uh, religions think that he was a very good person. And people like uh, Jesus who is very good. But unfortunately, like everything, every time happens, the bad always wins. You know, the Jews plotted against Jesus and killed him because he is becoming more popular. Is that the case? And if it is that the case, then why do we call it as a Good Friday? You know, Jesus died. It's a sad thing. All the disciples were crying. In fact, the disciples were so worried that they everybody were, you know, the word of God says that, you know, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Why is it called Good Friday? Can, any, can anybody, can you go? Yeah, yes, John? Uh, because, you know, he took away our sins. Oh. That's why it's good. Yeah. So, but the actual meaning of it is something else. And I want you to understand because this was a question that always used to be asked by my friends. They said, oh, today is a festival for you. Is it Good Friday? Can I wish you happy Good Friday? And they would not be worried about it, but they would try to mock us, saying, your God is dead. Why is it good for you? And here's the thing. In Oxford Dictionary, when this term was used as Good Friday, this is, does not mean, uh, the, the, it does not mean something good has happened. Something good has happened, that is the meaning of good. But when they put this good Friday, the meaning of good is holy. The meaning of good here is holy. In other words, we are saying it is a holy Friday. And that is the reason why across, across the world, they have something called as a holy week or Lent week. So the actual meaning of Good Friday, and I just wanted you to know, and if somebody asks you, I will tell them why it is good, because it is a holy uh, time for us, a holy week for us. And that is why uh, they termed, they coined the world as Good Friday. Okay? But before we go there, we have to ask a few things with, to ourselves. Jesus says that this is a sign. In the scripture, if you go with the narration of John's gospel, he's talking about a sign. Now, what is a sign? Okay. If it, any idea of what a sign is, the immediate thing would be a stop sign. A sign on top of a building saying this is a restaurant or a sign which says this is dangerous. Chase and 
sign. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Uh, it is that this uh, sign is you know if if you look at the definition of sign, it says it's either an object or quality or an event whose presence or occurrence indicates the probable presence or occurrence of something else. It's an event. If something happens like that, it is pointing you to a greater truth. Okay. I mean, Jesus says that, you know, the only sign that will be given to you, the only sign that will be, for example, it says danger, right? Don't eat it, danger. That is also a sign. It is saying don't eat it, something will happen to you. So similarly, like that, Jesus, when he says that it is a sign, the only sign that will be given to all of you is my death and my resurrection. It's my death and my resurrection. And it is very important when I say this one. It is important because this is what the whole gospel is all about. Now, if you go back, if you remember uh, what John's gospel is writing, it's saying that, you know, not everybody understood it, but later the disciples, what, remembered. that even before Jesus started his ministry, he knew he had to die. He knew he had to die. He knew he had to suffer the cross. He knew he had to face the wrath of God. And that is the reason why we as Christians have to first, when we come together, when we say we are Christians, we are Christians not because your parents are Christians. We are Christians not because you are going to a church. You are a Christian if you believe in these two things. If you believe, because what you have to remember, one of the important thing is, uh, you have a lot of uh, uh, people who uh, face a lot of religion. Like, for example, Islam is based out of Prophet Muhammad. Buddhism is made, uh, is based out of Buddha. Okay? And uh, then they have so many other gods. All of these gods, there is a, de a de depiction that they came in the form of a human being. But no ever person, you know, said that he is God. That he is going to die and he's going to raise up again. It is only Jesus who says that, that he is God. And he has conquered death on behalf of you and me. So it's very important for us to understand. Now, when I grew up, you know, a lot of people thought that, okay, if I tell this one, this is sufficient enough. If people, if you just go to, we should meet somebody, an unbeliever or a Hindu on the road, and you say, believe in Jesus, God will bless you, God will take care of you, you will not go to hell. And there are a lot of people who think in the same way. They think, okay, fine, let me believe in Jesus, he's another God for me. Okay? He's another God for me, let me believe in him. That is sufficient for me. But as Christians, even as we, as we come to that, it is very important for us to understand why should Jesus die for us. Okay? Why is this death necessary for us? Why can't God, why can't Jesus come here, stay here for the rest of the life, keep on doing miracles, take care of people, problems, feed them fish and loaves, but rather Jesus comes and dies and this death and this death and the significance of this goes all the way back to Genesis. You know, Genesis chapter 3. What does God say to Adam after Adam's sin? You know, there is going to be a seed, okay, which is going to trample. The seed of man will trample the seed of the serpent. And the seed of the serpent will bruise his heel. He's going to kill it and he's going to do it. When God did that, okay, and what he did after that, what does he do? Where there was no physical death, there was a first death of an animal. He kills an animal on behalf of Adam and Eve to cover their nakedness. That is the first time a blood is shed. That is the first time a blood is shed to cover the naked, uh, nakedness of Adam and Eve. And, uh, and before that, I just wanted to uh, quickly you know, make this point 
also was uh, that the death of Jesus uh, was in accordance to the pastoral life. Okay, anyways, uh, we will talk about this one. And, and then you see when was the next animal that was sacrificed? If you remember, it was at the time of Cain and Abel. And which sacrifice did God accept? The sacrifice of Cain or the sacrifice of Abel? Who sacrificed God? Yeah, what did they sacrifice? A lamb or an animal. And then we can see the same sacrifice, though nothing was mentioned in the Old Testament times, still we can see this animal that, this, uh, that people knew that God would be sacrificed only by uh, killing an animal. And we can see the same thing during Noah time. What happened after Noah's uh, Noah flood? What did Noah do? What did Noah do after the flood? He rose down. We can see that and uh, not going to focus more upon that, but uh, we can see that Noah, this is in Genesis 8, later on, if you go, you can see that this is where Noah sacrifices an animal and God makes a covenant. He gives a promise. He says, I am not going to destroy this world by blood. Okay. And then comes the process, the procedure, if you see, where we can, then there are a lot of scholars will say that this is where the covenant started and the animal was sacrificed. And it is also Noah. Yes, uh, what is it? No, uh, Noah's co no, no, Novik uh, covenant or Noah's covenant. And then after that, you can see when the animal was sacrificed, which was very important. It was a time during Abraham's time. And we can see the Abraham's time. You know, what did God, if this is in Genesis chapter 15 onwards, you can see that God calls Abraham. He says, He says, go away. From your family, from your country, he was actually residing in Ur of Chaldeans. It was a different place. And he said, leave your fathers, leave your land and go to the land of Canaan and I will bless you. Okay. And then when Genesis chapter 15, when Abraham talks about, talks to God and he says to him, God, where is my blessing? Then God, you know, he tells him, go get an animal and he will sacrifice that animal. This is known as Abraham, Abraham, uh, uh, Abraham, 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 covenant. Abraham, I don't know why. Abraham. Abrahamic covenant. Okay. So here also, if you could see there, the animal was killed. An animal was sacrificed. Yeah. But this is many times the animals were sacrificed, but a promise was also given with in accordance to that. Okay. And if you go back, the next time, which is very important, was the Mosaic covenant that was given to the nation of Israel during Moses' time. When Moses, what he does, he uh, what 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 does uh, he do uh, when God uh, gives this, uh, you know, frees Israel from the nation of Egypt. After 400 years of slavery, they were, uh, you know, rescued by Moses. God used Moses to free the nation of Israel. And then he gives all this set of Passover lamb was sacrificed and the Paschal lamb was sacrificed. And the festival of the uh, Passover lamb is also celebrated. And uh, you know, when Jesus was there and he was preaching, he says, what does he say? He says, you no, know, that I have not come here to abolish the law, but I have come here to fulfill it. And Jesus fulfilled the law up to the up to the hundred percent, up to the time, or you can say up to every jot and tittle of the law. And especially uh, when I was just researching it, and I could see that you know the Paschal Lamb. The lamb of the Passover. So what they used to do is they used to bring the lamb home for a week, and they used to inspect to see if there's any problem or not. And then 
the animal was slain in the afternoon on the 14th of the Nisan month. Okay, that is a Jewish calendar, 14th of the Nisan month. And I was telling you the other day because we have a Nissan car. The meaning of Nissan is what? Last week I told. Huh? That's what the No, Nissan is a, is the tenth month, but it says Nissan is uh, the meaning of Nissan is miracle. Okay. Uh, what used to happen was they used to cut it on a before one day before the Sabbath. So that is exactly in the eve. That is at 3 o'clock and that would be on a Friday. And when they used to cut and prepare for it, they used to sing the songs of Halim. That is from Psalm 113 to 118 onwards. Now, if you look at it, uh, we are so blessed to see that even in this, Jesus satisfied this uh, satisfied every requirement of the law. But the question should always come to us is why he had to die. And I just wanted to very, and, and in fact, uh, especially during uh, uh, when Christianity was growing and, and Jesus was raised, risen up again, uh, this was a common message or this was a common message that was preached across that Jesus died for us. Jesus died for us. And there are a lot of people, uh, especially if you look at uh, you know one of the witnesses, Stephen. Stephen was stoned to death. You know, before he was stoned to death, he gives this message, this message of death of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. And even Paul, whenever he was given this opportunity, then he was given this. But we need to ask this question to ourselves saying, you know, why? Why is it important that uh, Jesus has to be, Jesus had to be crucified? This is to show the righteousness of God. See, a lot of time what happens is, yes, uh, there is a wrong misunderstanding where people think that Jesus died for me. Okay? And, uh, and that death can only be satisfied if I accept him. But one of the important points, yes, he died for the elect, say, for the children of God. But more importantly, he died for the righteousness of God. And why is it so? And this is where we can very quickly look at Romans 3. Romans 3 gives us an idea. Uh, oh, sorry, Romans uh, 3.25. And we want to be a bit more in Romans and probably, so it better be put a word there. Three. Okay, 23 are not. Okay. So let's go here and say, for all have sinned. Now, if you look at Romans, uh, Paul is talking about that all the Gentiles are sinners and all those the Jews who have the law are also sinners. And he says, verse 23 onwards, says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace to the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. We have been justified, we have sinned, and we have fallen short of the glory of God. This happened when Adam and Eve sinned. And now we have this grace to redemption that is in Jesus Christ, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood. Now propitiation is that he paid for our sins through faith to demonstrate his righteousness, the, to demonstrate his righteousness. Uh, so what is the verse saying is, uh, I think we have, if you go back to verse 21, it says, but now the righteousness of God apart from, you know, why did God, why did Jesus have to die for you and me? Was so that God could demonstrate his righteousness. Why 
because he paid the penalty for all of us and he and and uh, and and we all of us who were sinful we fell short of the glory of god we didn't have any hope we were at, in enmity against god and this was done so that you know uh, god could die for us and if you look at second corinthians 5:21 i'm going to very quickly read that what did it say why did jesus has to die second corinthians 2:21 if you start about it. sorry second corinthians 5:21 You know, why did Jesus have to die? He had to die for our sake. Because verse 21 says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Christ died so that by his death, we can, we can become righteous. We who are sinners can become righteous. That is the reason why Christ died. And just as you know god you know in the old testament said put saying that you know if you sin any time there you have to sacrifice an animal a lamb during the passover god had to provide us sacrifice and the good thing is not only was he the, not only did god require a sacrifice but he provided that sacrifice and if you look that we can see this picture during Abraham and Isaac. You know, what did God say to Abraham? Go and sacrifice your son. And what does Abraham do when it's about, when Isaac, when Isaac asks him, Father, the wood is here, the fire is here, where is the lamb? What does Abraham say? The God will provide for himself a sacrifice. And that's what exactly happened. And this sacrifice uh, is something that God provided. So for, for us as Christians, we need to realize this. We need to understand that, you know, Christ has to die in our place. Why is that, you know, Christ had to die? Because it has to be perfect. We, in a lot many times, in a lot many religions, you know, we had this discussion that, you know, there are a lot of uh, people who, a uh, lot of religion, you know, they say that, you know, and they, they, they say, okay, you have to be a good person. And if you do 10 wrongs and if you do 20 things, God will still forgive you and they will send you to heaven. Okay. And it is, it is a work of, uh, in a way, it is a salvation through works. Where, you know, uh, they, the Muslims think that, you know, God is going to weigh you in a weighing machine. On one side is all the good works that you do. The other thing is all the bad things you do. And if the good outweighs the bad, then you are good. And that is the reason why even other Hindus also, what they do is, even if they commit so many sins, what they do, they will go to uh, River Ganga and then uh, they used to clean themselves up. They will do a lot of charity. He said, okay, fine, I killed one boy. Either if I give money to other boys, God will forgive us. Him. That is what a lot of religion requires. But Christianity is the only religion which says you have to be perfect. Even if you do, and that is why Jesus, when he, you know, uh, when, he, when he preaches on the Sermon on the Mount, he's talking about so many things. He says, if you think that you have not killed any brother, even if you call him, uh, you know, get angry at him without a reason, you have almost killed him. And such great is the requirement from God. You have to be perfect. You have to realize that. And that is the reason why for us as a Christian, we have to realize that only Jesus 
could pay this penalty. Only Jesus could pay this offering. Only he could die. You cannot die. A lot many times we try to do that. We try to pay for our sins. Just like Adam and Eve, they try to cover themselves with the fig leaves. We are also trying to cover ourselves by, by doing something good on the outside. But from the inside, our heart will be still be evil. And that is the reason why, uh, when I said that, you know, in India, a lot of people think, oh, believe in Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for you, that is sufficient enough, you will be saved. While it is true that you should believe in Jesus, that he died, what is more important also is, why only he could die for you. While people look at as a historic event, people say, okay, poor Jesus, he was, uh, you know, uh, people uh, took advantage of him and they were jealous of him. That's why he killed, Jesus could not do nothing. That is not what we believe in. We believe what? That only Jesus could die for us. You cannot die your parents cannot die. Somebody else cannot die. Only a holy lamb of God can die. Only he could die. This sacrifice was special. And we can see that and even as the occasion of uh, this Easter and Good Friday and even as we are looking at it, let us also look at Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53 is very, very important for us to understand because it talks about this Jesus, the servant of God. It is written. And let's read that so that we can very quickly understand what it is talking about. Isaiah chapter 53. We just look at Isaiah chapter 53. We'll read 53 from verse 3 onwards. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as if we, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. It is very important for us to understand that you know, Jesus had to die because of our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. By his stripes we are healed. Verse 7 onwards, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. And he was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before it is silent. It's very important for us to understand that Jesus did exactly the same thing. Though Peter wanted to fight, you know, uh, when they wanted to capture Jesus, Jesus did not, but rather he went silently as a sheep. He, as a sheep before it's here, is silent, so he opened not his mouth. Jesus took the punishment, not pointing out, saying that it was unfair, unjust not trying to come with the river because he knew only he could satisfy the wrath of God. If you look at Isaiah 53.10, it says, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. It's very important. It pleased the Lord. Yes, God died to display the righteousness of God the Father. And God the Father was pleased by the sacrifice of Jesus. You remember, we were meditating upon the word that, you know, uh, during the baptism of Jesus Christ, what does God the Father say about him? 
this is my son in whom i am well pleased he was very fond of this son and this son and when he saw how jesus was oppressed and when when he saw in other words when he saw the travail of his soul it pleased god and he went made an offering to for sin it pleased god you and i cannot please god by our sacrifice and on our offering it pleased him and when jesus hung on the cross you know now there are seven words which are spoken when jesus was hung on the cross but one of the prominent words that i can remember even as i am child even as uh, today smitatta was talking about what is that word it is finished teltastoy samaptamayenu jesus cried out saying it is finished what is finished the work that he came the sack the payment that he paid for thy for your sins is finished and this is when we say we believe in christ we believe in his death we believe one thing is that we cannot atone or we cannot pay for our own sin we need jesus but there are a lot of people who don't need jesus the pharisees did not need jesus because they said me i never sinned why should you die for me they were blinded by their self righteousness i should i ask for forgiveness i don't have any sin the first important point for you even before you believe that jesus died it is not a historical fact that he died it is a spiritual understanding for you to know that only he could die for you and when he died he completed the work only and he paid it completely on the cross he paid it completely on the cross and that is why jesus had to die we were re- reading halel psalm 117 it you, it was you, if you remember i said it is praise god all ye gentiles remember and understand you know this jesus died in the nation of israel but with his death he opened the gates for the gentiles also to also to come and we can see this is amos amos chapter 9 verses 11 and 12 it's a very wonderful verse and it's talking about how did the death of jesus with the death of jesus let, let's look at that on that day amos 9 11 on that day i will raise up the tabernacle of david which has fallen down and repair its damages i will raise up its ruins and i will rebuild as it in the days of old this is an indication of christ's death and resurrection he says i am going to rebuild it and they may possess the remnant of edom and all the gentiles who are called by my name all the gentiles who are called by my name all those who are called by me god is going to restore he is going to restore all the gentiles and and why did and, and then that and that is what we believe in we believe that you know jesus died why because he could not because we cannot pay for our sins but here is a good thing here is something which is different from all the sacrifice that was ever made all the sacrifice that were ever made i was talking about how a animal was sacrificed how a blood was shed whenever a new a covenant was given whenever a promise was given from god to the people of israel 
here is when when jesus died a covenant is also given and this covenant is spoken in uh, we know that but this is summarized in hebrews chapter 10 it talks about that so you just look at it Hebrews chapter 10 and so and uh, this is the verse 11 and when jesus died his death was necessary uh, what, uh hebrews chapter 10 verse 11 onwards and every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sins you know in the temple jerusalem they used to kill so many animals year after year why because you would always sin and the hebrew writer is saying you no know, this sacrifices were never taking away the sins but this man that is jesus after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever sat down at the right hand of god from the time waiting till his enemies are made his footstool for by one offering he had perfected because this is with the this uh, and if you look at verse 16 why did he die this is so that he could bring a new covenant and this is the covenant that jesus talks and last week also we looked at it and when we participated in the table this is the new covenant in my that has been done in my death and if you look at 10:16 it says this is and this is the promise that god gave this is the covenant that i will make with them after those days says the lord i put my laws into their hearts and in their minds i will write them then he asks their sins and their lawless deeds i will remember no more and jesus had to die jesus had to die and uh, if you look at romans uh, sorry hebrews 9 itself uh, it talks about how it was important a testament or a covenant it has to be done when god removed the old covenant of law and brought in the new covenant of grace he had to make a sacrifice and christ was that sacrifice jesus was the sacrifice and that is why it is very important it is not a random historical event christ came knowing very well this is what he had to do he had to bring the new promises that god the father had for us and god the father revealed and he had to fulfill the promise that he had god made to adam and eve our spiritual our parents our first parents what was the promise a seed is going to come and he is going for to once and for all crush crush or kill the seed of serpent and what does the serpent represent it does not say it is kill the serpent but it means it is kill away take away the sin and even as it said he will remember their sins no more that's very important for us to understand that and the reason why jesus had to die but equally important also is that jesus not only died but he rose up again not only did he die and a lot of people they might be one part where no they uh, they believe uh, one part they say that you know yes jesus was a historical character but to rise up from the dead how can any person rise up from the dead you know if you see if you remember there are a lot of people who keep on talking this uh, there is a very famous book called heaven is for real where a small kid he said that he died and he went to heaven and he played water sports with jesus he played with splash gun with jesus christ he enjoyed with the angels and he came back and then the father of the nonon they see uh, i did not know anything only this child is talking like this and they wrote a book and he became very famous 
he earned a lot of money they made a movie also about it and but you know what recently and this is some 20 30 years back i'm talking about this small kid but later yes it confessed i made it all up and made it all up how deceiving this person is but remember what the word of god says it is appointed for man to die once and judgment we all have to face that judgment all the people who are born in flesh have to die death has to be there and and he died and we have to face it so we have to be careful with people especially if they say i died for 10 minutes i went to heaven and now i am back there are a lot of people who worship these people even lazarus when he died you know if you remember lazarus story he rose up from the dead but he had to die again for any person who lives he has to die why because of the sin of adam physical death came because sin of adam so so also jesus also died so but here is the blessing the blessedness we have that death could not hold him longer death could not hold him longer because and that is what when we read you know we were reading psalm 117 he has not left my soul soul in death god is uh, jesus is you know saying because he knows that death can no longer hold him though he became sin for us yet with his righteousness death could not have no control over him and he rose up and you know why he rose up he could have just died and that it could be in there but no he rose up he rose up you know why romans 420 23 says he rose up for our justification he rose up to showcase that you know, we will be justified in christ when he died he did not die randomly for everyone but rather he took the names of all the children of god god i have died i have paid the sin for all my children and he died and he was raised up for our justification death could not hold him and he rose up the word of god it start in colossians if you look at colossians 1:18 and a very important point point is he was the i let, let me just read it very quickly the verse is very important and in the verse the word that is used here is preeminent he was preeminent 1 verse 18 colossians 1:18 and he is talking uh 17 words on what and he is before all things and in all things in him consists and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning the first born from the dead and that in all things he may have to pre eminence god did not say okay you did sin you live your life you try to live a good life try to live a perfect life rather Jesus came in the body so that he could live a perfect life he died and just like he died and he rose up again so that he might have preeminence in everything he rose up again and this is the hope that you and i have when we believe in uh, uh, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ we believe that he died only he could die and when he died he completely completed the work that was supposed to be by satisfying the wrath of god but he could, by which we also could be raised up again ecclesia uh, ecclesiastics you know i don't remember the reference but it says what is the difference between a rich and a poor person the rich can you know 
in all the money that he has in all the toys that he has a poor person might cry saying i don't have anything but the at the end of the day who both shall die and they both shall be in the ground only they cannot carry their riches and their sicknesses and their worries when they die okay? but here is a hope that you have there is a hope that we have by the resurrection of christ that christ who had preeminence he went through this suffering for us and he also rose up again to give us that hope that we will also rise up again if we believe in these truths and jesus gives us a promise as well in my father's house there are many mansions and i'll come and i'll receive you that is the hope that we have and that is the reason why we sang this song he lives he lives jesus is living he is living for us in fact you for the right you use the power jesus is he is going to pray for us for this not only does he has has he dead but he takes our names and he is interceding for us he is praying for us even now in the in front of the father these are for whom i have died and the father looks at his, his sacrifices and he will not remember our sins and that is a blessed hope that we have and that is a blessed hope that jesus was pointing out to but not a lot of people understand this as the word says in john's gospel so the disciple did not understand but they later understood it and believed so also let this seed of truth be put in and let us stand on the bread for the word that has been spoken and for the hope that we have for the sign that jesus looks into a sign which is meaningless for people a sign which you know people laugh about and people ridicule about our people don't believe upon but we believe on this death and it's very important that had christ not risen then the hope that we have is useless that what paul says so with that let's pray to god and thank god for this word